MMA Rants and Raves, Conor McGregor versus the UFC. Who's right and who's wrong? Now, as you guys well know, there was an incident that took place this weekend leading up to the UFC 223 card. It was a big brawl, a tirade, where McGregor threw a bunch of stuff at a bus. It appeared that there were some fighters that were hurt. I don't know much about it, but a lot has been speculated about what happened and who's right and who's wrong and what happened. And you know what the reality is? The reality is you really have to think deep into this. Who needs more? Now, it's very interesting because I did a video many years ago. It was a controversial topic at the time in the world of MMA, and that was about Fedor. And back then, Brock Lesnar was the guy in the UFC. He actually started to help the UFC by putting them into being considered a sport or being considered a competition, even a combat sport, because before then the UFC was almost relatively unknown. I mean, if you ask the average person what the UFC was, most people didn't even know what you were talking about. So Lesnar brought in millions of fans, and the UFC, when he came from the WWE, he's obviously a very well-known, bona fide superstar. And then he came in, and obviously he succeeded quite well. And he's responsible for really getting a lot of exposure in the mainstream for the UFC. And back then, the best fighter in the world the Babe Ruth of MMA, you can call him. I think he's the greatest of all time. Fedor was the heavyweight, the best heavyweight in the world, best fighter in the world, and that was the fight to make. Now, if you remember back then, there was a lot of media coverage. There was a lot of talk about getting that fight to happen, that super fight. And I said it wasn't going to happen. A lot of people thought the UFC would sign him, and I said, no, it's not going to happen. And there was one main reason why I said this, and that's because Fedor didn't need the UFC. The UFC needed Fedor, because MMA is not like other sports. It's very different, and I'm going to explain a little bit later when I get into this topic further. Now, what happened was he didn't sign, and I remember the reason why they couldn't sign is because Fedor wanted to co-promote. He had his own promotion he was fighting with. He was co-promoting with organizations that he was fighting under. Pride was being dissolved at that particular time, and there were a lot of pride fighters coming into the UFC who, by the way, had a lot of success when they came in. Many of them won championships. It just goes to prove for all those people that say, oh, well, you know, pride is not the UFC. And, well, they're wrong. The pride fighters were better than UFC fighters, especially back then. Like I said, most of them came in. A lot of big names came in. They won championship belts. So the best of all of them was Fedor. So imagine what he would have done if he came in back then. But... The reality is, is that he didn't sign with the UFC, and the UFC was not flexible. I mean, he wanted to co-promote, and they didn't want to. He wanted to do his own stuff, and they were very rigid, and it really backfired. Because if that fight would have happened, it really would have given the UFC a lot of exposure. They could have just made one fight. It wasn't like they were going to sign him to this big contract and pay him all this money, like you see in other sports. They basically could have made this fight. That was the fight to happen. It really backfired because Lesnar did not have a long career. Maybe the UFC figured, look, this guy is going to continue fighting. He's a big name, and there'll be other heavyweights that can challenge him, but he did not have a long career. So it was not a good idea for the UFC to do that. And I think it's hypocritical because here you go. You have Conor McGregor years later, right? This guy comes in. He's a huge superstar. I can't even imagine how many people he brought into the UFC to watch the UFC. And what happens? Eventually, he becomes so popular, he actually was able to convince Mayweather to come out of retirement to fight him. I mean, that is a very substantial impact to have. I mean, he just has that kind of ability to do things like that. Now, do you think that the UFC wouldn't co-promote? Of course they co-promoted. I mean, that wasn't a UFC event. It was a boxing event. So obviously, they sat down, they got their lawyers together, and they figured it out. They said, look, you know, this is huge, huge money. So the UFC must have been licking their chops getting this fight together. So they do this, and they couldn't co-promote with Fedor back then? Come on. I mean, maybe they learned their lesson. Now, what's the point of all this? Whether you think that Conor McGregor was upset for a certain reason, whatever side you take about what happened, it doesn't matter. You know why? Because the UFC needs Conor McGregor much more than Conor McGregor needs the UFC. I'm going to explain why. This guy obviously is a big superstar. And it's not just because of his fighting. It's because of who he is. I mean, he's a celebrity status. He likely could have been in boxing. Maybe he would have even made more money and have a bigger impact because boxing is a bigger sport. 
There's more money involved there. He could have started out there, and maybe his career would have jump-started a lot quicker. If not, he could have been in WWE. He could have been in Hollywood. He just has that ability. I mean, he would have been somewhere. So imagine if he would have went somewhere else and not the UFC. I mean, they would have lost all this exposure. You know how much money they made on Conor McGregor? I mean, they made fortunes of money and exposure than if he was not there. I mean, this guy is like the face of the company. So, I mean, let's compare it to another sport. Let's look at the NFL, for example, right? Let's say you have this athlete. He is unlike anything the NFL has ever seen. He can only play in the NFL. He can't say, well, I don't like the way I'm being treated. They're not paying me enough. They're not respecting me enough. I'm going to leave the NFL and I'm going to go somewhere else. You can't. Where is he going to go? That's the place to be. That's the pros. There is nowhere else to go. And if he does go somewhere else, I mean, he's not going to be able to make enough money or play against top-level competition, right? The NFL is a team. You see, football is a team. You have to have many, many, many players to come together to win. This is the exact opposite. In MMA, it's just one guy. Just one guy. That's all it is. He's the team. He's everything. When he moves, he takes everything with him. If McGregor has a dispute with the UFC and they're not getting along, I mean, if he just packs up and leaves, he can go to another MMA organization. Now, I can tell you this, guys. If he ever leaves and he goes to another MMA organization, this will open up the floodgates. You know how many fighters would follow Conor McGregor to fight him? I mean, he'll be like the freaking Pied Piper of MMA. They'll follow this guy wherever he goes to fight him because he's the money fight. Whoever fights McGregor now is going to be an instant millionaire. You know, massive amounts of money. So they can't let that happen. And you know the way it works. Crowds follow crowds. That's how it could start. One guy follows out. Then there's more people coming out. Before you know it, the floodgates open up. So it's not a good thing. They have to keep this guy happy. And like I said, they co-promoted with him when he fought Mayweather. They're giving in because they have to. And they owe a lot of gratitude to McGregor for what he's done for them. And if he wants something, whether you agree with him or not, he's right even if you think he's wrong. Because he is the guy bringing in a lot of exposure that they did not have before. Sure, Lesnar did what he did when he came in. GSP brought in friends. McGregor just came out of nowhere. And that's what they needed. I mean, he's bringing a lot of people in. And he's bringing in people unlike anything seen before. Way more than Lesnar, GSP, or anybody else that came into the UFC. So they have to keep him happy. I mean, that's the bottom line. So whether you agree with him or not, it goes back to the same thing that they had with Fedor. The UFC needs him. He does not need the UFC. However they respond to this incident, don't buy it. You know, on the surface, they have to say, oh, it's terrible, and this and that. The bottom line is they know that this is marketing, and they know that they have to keep this guy happy. I mean, he was visibly upset. I don't know what the reason was. He had his belt stripped, whatever it was. And people are saying he's not defending his belt. It doesn't matter, because they have to keep this guy happy. If he wants something, they have to give it to him, because he doesn't need them. That's just an organization. He can go anywhere and fight, and fighters will follow him. The best in the world will follow him. If he leaves and goes to another organization, the best fighter will go and fight him because they want to make money. That's what it's about. So this is a very interesting situation. I just think it's deja vu. It's something that's happening all over again. And the UFC has learned their lesson the first time. And I think this whole thing is going to work out. I think the UFC is going to do everything in their power to keep McGregor happy. Because they have to. Because McGregor is on his prime. I think he's still going to be fighting. And as long as he is, as long as he's on the radar, that's what they need. They need him to be on the radar. They need him to be fighting. This is what they need. The UFC is going to do everything in their power to make sure that they resolve everything with him. That's the bottom line. They need him, and he does not need them. So this is a very interesting situation, and I would like to know what you think about it. Please leave your comments. Please subscribe. Please like up this video, and thank you for tuning in.